You're watching the Watch Fox Sports Zone. Overtime with Corey Miller. New set, new high school show, <laughs> but the characters does not change. Corey Miller alongside the man, the myth, the legend, that's Lou Bajak of the state newspaper as we are getting ready to get high school football, as we say in Paisley, crunk up, you know what I mean? And they got to crunk up today and skis it, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But, man, good to see you. Lou got his dad back over here. He's watching us live on the couch from Ohio, so we're glad to have his father in town to <laughs> See how his son do tonight. So dad's going to judge you when you drive yeah, home. He'll get, so we'll get a critique. Don't disappoint yeah, there him. There you go. Don't disappoint him tonight because he's going to give it to you in the car. <laughs> anyway, we were out at practice this morning. Yep. Out at, uh, of course, the Hammond got things going. Skis have started uh, their camp early. Of course, Kimmy in his 15th year as head coach at Hammond. They won the state championship again. What is that, Lou? That's eight, nine for nine him? Nine and 14 years for him. Nine Henry. and 14 years can he get it to double digits this season? That's the ticket. But, you know, one thing that I was talking to Kimmy about today was, you know, when you win so much and so often, Lou, you got to find something to try to motivate these young men. You got to find, you know, something to say. I don't know what it is. And, and for him, it was about like, you know, we're not looking ahead. We're going to look at, at the, little, the little things. We're not looking big picture this season. Like, but I want them to go home and like clean up the room. And I mean, it was kind of weird and strange. Yeah. But, but that's the message. I mean, that's where and focus about the little things. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's what makes him such a good coach. And he, he can do the little things, and he gets the most out of his players. I think uh, what he's been able to do uh, in his time there, he's a great motivator. And I think they're not even using the word state championship. Right. Uh, that, that's his thing. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing. And fre fresh new uh, group. And uh, he's got some things to improve on. I know he wants to improve on his offensive line. But uh, he's got a lot of talent, though. Uh, to build around, and this might be one of his best teams ever, and that's Which saying something. Which is kind of scary. Yeah. I mean, because when I was out there today, and I'm looking, I'm going, and of course, all the guys was not there. I mean, Mr. Burke still playing Mr. Birch. AAU basketball, so he wasn't even at practice today. He'll be back, of course, I guess tomorrow, this weekend. Yeah. He'll be back with the guys. But you look at Boogie out there, and you look at Jackson Muschamp, who's mm -hmm. going to take over the throttle at quarterback uh, for these guys. And the system is already there. And, and that's the amazing thing. When you look at Hammond, people say skis. Uh, people think it's a lower level of football. But let me tell you right now, it isn't. I think Hammond can compete with anybody in the public school when you look at the talent on the field. I looked at their defensive line when you get Jordan uh, Birch back. Oh, yeah. And you got Boogie on those. They're going to create havoc. Mm -hmm. They got some guys on the outside that can run at the linebacker positions. They got a secondary that can play and cover. Yep. And, you know, and then the offense is just so – uh, program, uh, you know, he didn't like when I used the word system before, <laughs> you know, but th it is a system. And they told me today, hey, our, our offense is already in and day number one. Yeah, they know. I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, and you have a guy uh, like Jackson Muschamp, too. It's his first year as starting quarterback. But yet I think he, he has a chance to be special. And uh, being a coach's son, like Kimry, uh, they've been around the game and just have those intangibles. And I really like his receivers around him. I like Wilson. I like Sal Diaz. Uh, I like the rest, Kilio Canty. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of guys that throw the ball. I think the X factor this year, Jordan Birch is going to be, uh, you're going to see him moved all around offense, <laughs> uh, be, whether it be running back, whether it be receiver. I think he's going to be special on both sides of the ball. Jordan year. Birch is their five star athlete. Yes, a five star at Hammond School. Mm -hmm. And this guy, Guy is long. He's rangy. He can close. You know, I don't know what he he'll project in, at the college level. Maybe outside linebacker, defense. He's right. probably 250 already and right. lean. And they play him on offense, and that's what you're talking about because this is a guy. Coach, one of the coaches told me this. He said, you know, some one one of the other schools said, shall we be concerned about our kids? You know, because <laughs> you know you got these big guys that right. are running the football like Birch, and and he said, yeah, when we give him the ball. That, you know, kids better look out because the skis that we, we know across the board, you know, they don't have mm -hmm. great players, especially on the back end. Right. Yeah. And you saw it in the state championship game mm -hmm. last year. Every time they would give him the ball, I mean, he, he was special. He can get five, six yards at a time. And I think receiving wise, 
Uh, I think they found something with him. I know he did really well at the USC 7-on-7. Seven seven. So uh, I think you could split him out or you could come put him off the line at tight end. And uh, you can do so many things. I know Coach Kimry mm -hmm. is glad. He w didn't have to do that last year. He came in late a little bit uh, right at the start of the season and everything. So um, he can do a lot more with a year in the system and a uh, year under his belt at, at Hammond. If I'm going to be a prophet tonight on this show, I'm going to prophesize that he will win his 10th state championship this year because <laughs> there's nobody in Skeezer going to beat Hammond. They are loaded, loaded, and I mean baked potato loaded. And when I talk to Eric Kimmer, you can see the confidence that he exudes on that practice field. It's always fun to get out here the first day and, um, and particularly these first week, week or two and figure out kind of what kind of team we have and how to best put the puzzle pieces together. At the end of the day, we're talking about personal responsibility. And the first thing that we can do as young men is clean up our habitat. And uh, we're focused on small things this year. I'm really not concerned about big picture at all. Um, and our first step toward maybe taking some individual responsibilities, cleaning up our room. So I'm asking our guys to do that this year. It's a little bit odd, but it's something we're gonna focus on. Jackson understands the game of football. He's grown a couple inches and I think he's put on about 15 pounds of muscle. He can really run. I'm excited to see him do things athletically. Uh, he seems to have a grasp of the offense and he's throwing the ball really, really well. And I think Andre Wilson's the guy we want to get the ball to first and foremost. Uh, he's got big play capability anytime he touches the ball. Cleo Canty's a guy that played defense mostly last year, but he's got a lot of speed and quickness. Saul Diaz and uh, will play some tight end, but also come over um, and play receiver a little bit. Of course, Jordan Birch is a guy we're going to get the ball to as much as we can too, you know, when he's not playing defense. So we got some guys that uh, we can distribute the ball to. <laughs> That's what you call confidence, right? Yeah, we oh, yeah. got some guys, some players, right? We got some <laughs> players that we can distribute the ball to. Jordan Birch was going to be, I'm telling you, he will be scary uh, to tackle. Now, we talk about all these great players uh, for Hammond on the field, but you got to always have great coaches, guys that they respect. On this coaching staff right now, he has, I believe, seven former Gamecocks, including himself, that's on that staff. You got Jeff Barnes. You even got R&E head coach Jay Fry right, is yep. on the staff. And, and, and when you look on this field and you see all the information that they're given, you know, you see all the stuff that they're saying and these kids are receiving, it's pretty impressive. Who has a better staff? No, I know. I mean, numbers-wise, maybe Dutch Fork has more, but as far as quality, I mean, you got guys like – you mentioned uh, Jay Fry. You got Jeff Barnes. You got now Andre Goodman. You throw him in the mix. Uh, he's years in the NFL and then working at USC. Got a son on the team. I think uh, no better people to learn from than former guys that have done it before, been in the trenches. And I think the kids respect that and they could uh, uh, relate to that uh, well as yeah. well. Andre Goodman, 10 years in the National Football League, a great player at the University of South Carolina. Now he brings his wealth of knowledge and wisdom to the football field. And we asked him about that this morning, about now being a coach for the Hammond School. The experience is there, but I'm inexperienced in this position. I've never coached before, so I don't want to pretend like just because I, I have a resume that suggests that football is in my DNA. Coaching it is different than playing it. And being able to transfer your information to another kid and making sure they're motivated to receive it is a whole different skill set that I'm still trying to develop. And uh, what are you saying? You know, still is a rookie mm -hmm. when it comes to coaching. Yeah. I get it, but <laughs> but again, when you know the game, it's, it's pretty easy to teach it, especially on that defense side of the ball where he's going to be uh, coaching a lot. But that's our feature spotlight this week and uh, training camp or our, our summer tours, I like to call it. Uh, Hammond, of course, uh, we, as good as they are, all the players that they got, I wanted to make them our number one feature here as we kick off high school football. When we come back after the break, I want to talk a little about a situation at Swansea. Greg Wright. No longer the coach, no future. What is that going to hold? And what in the heck is going on with Swansea? That's coming up right here in the OT after the break. They know I have. I have. You're watching the Watch Fox Sports Zone. Overtime with Corey Miller. And welcome back to the OT. Of course, uh, we're hanging out here. The man who met the legend, Lou Bajak, he's a Hall of Famer. I'm telling you, this guy right here is special. But it was funny during the break, his dad over there doing OHIO. I told him we don't do that here. This, this is Gamecock Nation. 
He better get sandstone red. You should you should have warned him about that. Yeah, but, uh, he had to learn on the way. <laughs> he had to learn on the song, right? <laughs> All right. But speaking of learning a lesson and what the heck is going on, let's talk about Swansea, right? Let's mm. talk about Greg Wright, right. who I know very well. Mm -hmm. I've known him to be a, a wonderful young man, a wonderful young coach. He went out to Eau Claire, turned that program around with the Swansea, was doing good. I was, I, all the things that I saw, Lou, was him doing great thing with his players and, and just interaction was great. Right. They were going on, seemed like little trips and things. I enjoyed what he was doing at Swansea. Right. You know, he's got a player committed to Clemson. Mm -hmm. So everything seemed to be pointing in the right direction with Greg Wright and Swansea. But then now, no AD job, no head football coaching job. There's a lawsuit in place. I mean, I know you've been following this just like we have here at Watch Fox, but what in the heck is going on? Yeah, it's, I mean, you don't see, you see coaches get let go, I mean, all the time. Right. But a month before the season started, a few weeks before the season, and just uh, it wa wasn't the type of normal uh, firing, you mm -hmm. see. You just, I, I don't know. I mean, Coach Wright, everything, I thought he like you said, uh, did the right things. Uh, it was building things right there, but obviously had some people um, that uh, maybe he rubbed the wrong way. Maybe something, maybe just wasn't a good fit there uh, that they thought, and uh, uh, they let him go. And uh, now, I mean, he tried to get his job back. They go, he goes before the school board. He thinking maybe, maybe he got a chance there. Mm -hmm. And then the school board comes out of that meeting. They're like, we're not voting. We're not doing anything that night. We're just going to go with the... Which is strange to me. With, yeah, we're not voting that night. We're going to say we're with the school. Uh, they're upheld in the school's decision. They're not... Uh, they didn't want to... They're like, that's their decision. So we're not going to get Yeah, we're not going to do anything. So now, a uh, day later after that, his lawyer and the lawyer team, uh, they file a lawsuit, $300,000 lawsuit against the school district, Lexington 4, and uh, other interested other parties in there so we'll see from there and the uh, school district still has to respond they got um, 30 days to respond so we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, he hated for coach Wright because we've known him we thought he was doing mm -hmm. a good job and uh, hopefully uh, you know um, he can get a job somewhere else down the road it might not be this year it might not be uh, next year maybe at least as an assistant job but he loves football and he loves those kids and that's that's who he was most hurt for talking to him afterwards mm -hmm. uh, in the limited time that the uh what he said is the kids he's going to miss those kids he's going to miss friday nights he's going to miss uh teaching and uh, helping them get through their athletic career and that's a great segue because as camp opens up tomorrow for swansea and you know i don't even know Who's the head coach? Who's the guy that's going to lead this program? And, and when I look at the situation, just based on what people were reporting, like yourself and people here at Watch Fox, you go, I don't see anything really that they're saying that's a fireable offense. You know, so what's going on? And I know when you talk about high school sports and you get parents or angry parents and he don't, they don't like this decision by the coach, it happens. I'm not saying that's the case in this situation, but, you know, I, you, you'll be crazy to think those things don't happen. Mm -hmm. But now moving forward, Who's going to lead his football team? Because that he had this team heading in the right direction. Yeah, I this mean, is, they I were think, going to be a big year. They had a lot of guys coming back. We mentioned Greg Williams is mm -hmm. going to Clemson. You got Keenan Coates, really, really good quarterback, good basketball player. They got some other guys uh, on the line and some skill guys coming back. I thought they were they could make a, a bid in that region. You got Gilbert and uh, Strom Thurmond, but I thought they could definitely uh, make a push for the playoffs and then may, maybe even go. F uh, challenge for a region title, but now Eric Pack is the assistant or going to be the interim coach. Uh, he led the team, uh, the wrestling team, to a state championship appearance uh, uh, last year. Now he has a chance. That's a tough <laughs> spot for him. I mean, you know, you I mean, to come with, I, I mean, you come in off the wrestling team and that, and just the, all the situation. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on him and uh, to do well and uh, maybe get the job down the way, or maybe he just wants to do well for the school district here, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see what happens. But wrestling football, I, I ain't buying it. I'm just sorry she wants to do something, something smells in this situation, in my opinion. Well, you know, we're talking about a lot of new coaches and coaching changes going on here in the Midlands. Of course, Blythewood last year was a team that came in with a lot of talent, with a lot of hope, thought they were going to do something. They had a new coach even last year, right? Well, that didn't go so well because he is now gone, and now they have a new coach. They had a lot of injuries on this football team last year, Luke. Quarterback in particular. I mean, they were going down like flies. Defense was trying to keep them in the ball games, but could not sustain themselves. But when you look at this team, Blythewood, the Bengals, 
I don't know much about the coach. He's not from this area, so I don't, I don't know much about him. So what information can you give us, Lou, about his situation, what he's going to bring to the table? I know during our media day, a lot of players seem to, to, to like what he's bringing. Yeah, and I've talked to some of the players. They like the energy and everything that's brought in. Uh, kind of changing things around. Uh, Coach Smith, I think he's a lot different than Coach Smith, uh, especially schematic-wise. I think you're going to see him throw the ball a little bit more and uh, more wide open than uh, Coach Smith's offense. And you mentioned about being healthy. If they could stay healthy, get Quinton Patton back for a full season, they, they'll have another strong defense. We've got Patrick Godbolt, some other guys. And, but uh, Coach Sadell, he, he's won up in Hickory Ridge, and he's used to winning uh, there. And hopefully he can uh, turn things around after Blythewood. Blythewood's you used to win in there right. uh, f for the most part since uh, they started uh, more than a decade ago. So hopefully he can do that uh, with this group and uh, um, put a lot of more points on the board. They struggled scoring yeah, at score. the end. Uh, I mean, really bad. Uh, they were putting points on the board what was their struggle, especially late in that year. Well, one thing we had at uh, FNR Media Day, I want to hear from the big nasties because that's what they do have coming back is the offensive lineman. Here's what they had to say. Oh, they implement footwork a lot. We do it every day before practice because we all need to have good feet as we're pulling or doing pass set. We should all just have good feet and be able to rely on ourselves. Well, first, first you got to get everybody fired up. And I think we have a lot of people that have that mentality that can get the whole team going with uh, Colin Williams and Brady Carson. They did some real, some real nut jobs. So I feel like if everybody starts going crazy, we can just get the job done. Best groups at FNR Media Day. I must tell you that far speaking to the media. When we come back, we'll look at week one of our game. Gilbert and Gray, and of course, we'll talk. Is there pressure? We'll talk about that coming up. You're watching the Watch Fox Sports Zone. Overtime with Corey Miller. We're less than a month before the first game of week zero, they call it, in high school. What about Gray Collegiate and Gilbert? Let's start with Gilbert Indians right now. I love that place. Coach Leapart doing a nice job mm -hmm. up there. Of course, only one loss last year, and that was in the playoffs. I right. thought they were going to run to the state championship, Lou. But uh, when you look at what he's got this year, what should we expect? No Manny Bright, who did so much for that oh, team Manny last Bright. year. But uh, Josh Strickland's back. Uh, you got Cody Temples, you, you got uh, Tolan also back, a lot, a lot of weapons, Darius Bell on defense. I think another big season in store for Gilbert for sure. They're taking on great collegiate, the Eagles. They got quarterback over there. People like to ride the quarterback. Hunter Hams is mm -hmm. back. I mean, you see his dad and on Facebook and all in the social media. He's doing camps. He's getting recruited. Oh, yeah. Can he take this team, this great team, to the next level? I think so, especially with that region. I think they're, uh, with Saluda now out of that region, I think they're they're the favorites mm -hmm. to win that region. I like Hunter Helms, and I also like a uh, name to watch, uh, Dallas Corbett. Uh, he, he didn't play. Played on the basketball team, no football, but uh, he has a chance. He did re well at camps. I think he has a chance at tight end defensive end for this team. Adam Holmes got pressure on him because Great Collegiate just won a state championship with Dion Bethay in <laughs> basketball. Can they get it done on the gridiron? We just got to wait and see because that's going to be a wonderful football game. We kicked that off on our Sonic Friday Night Rivals. Now, one of the teams that I do like and I always like them, you know, the Northeast Columbia team that I like is Perry Parks in Ridgeview. Mm -hmm. I like that team. I like what he brings to the table's energy. Those boys was fun on, on our media day. I know you <laughs> couldn't make it, Lou, but yeah. They're confident, but last year they took a step back. They felt like only seven mm -hmm. wins on the season. Double digit the year before. Can they revamp? And make a difference. I think so. I think they're they got a lot of key guys back. I think Javon Anderson, a quarterback, is a guy that uh, leading this offense, and uh, Waylon Napper also. Um, Waylon Napper, uh, one of the lead, top receivers here in the area, and uh, good on the basketball court. And mm -hmm. I think uh, he's in for a special season on for a senior year in football. Well, here's what the boys from the Blazers had to say about the football season. I was talking to my coaches the other day, like. Going into year four, the kids know your expectations, so it's a lot easier uh, to, you know, structure our summer workouts and the kids know what we expect as coaches. So uh, we're excited. We've got a good group coming back, and uh, we're putting high expectations on this group. Had his little, little kids camp today, K yeah. through eighth grade, I think, had a great turnout. He's always really in the community involved, getting those kids involved, even at a young age. So I like everything that they embody out there from a program, 
uh, you know, in the classroom, everything that he really gets out of those kids is pretty special. I think they're going to have a wonderful bounce back year. The team that people talk to me about is Irmo. What about Irmo real quick? I think Kendrell Flowers, special athlete. I think they have a chance also uh, to do some damage this year. Yeah, so hopefully they can get things done. We'll have more on Reggie Kennedy coming up in the overtime. We've got to get to a quick break. We'll come back. We'll wrap the show. We'll ask this man who's going to be the biggest surprise team in the Midlands. You'd be shocked. That's after the break. You're watching the Watch Fox Sports Zone. Overtime with Corey Miller. I want to coach. I want it now, too. But you got to be realistic about things. You got to, when you're rebuilding a program, you go in and evaluate. Um, um, I would say from the feeder program all the way up. Um, I feel like we got some things in place now to we can get to the next level in our program. Kennedy, I talked about, I asked him a question about pressure mm -hmm. real quick, Lou. Is he under the gun? Is there pressure there? I think uh, if they don't make the playoffs, I, I think so. I think they had a good year last year, and they, they have the tools around to mm -hmm. maybe build on that again. But, yeah, I think the playoffs uh, definitely would uh, help his cause. All right, so we'll see. Now, you know, normally this is our top five time. We <laughs> pick the best five teams in the Midlands, but tonight I'm putting the man on the spot. Who's going to be the biggest surprise team in the Midlands this season? I'm going to go with the team we talked about tonight, Blythewood. Uh, Blythewood coming, coming off a bad year. It's just, it was bad. Uh, Coach Smith only lasted one year. Uh, injuries, everything uh, that could go wrong. I think uh, with the new coach, um, a healthy Quentin Patton, uh, like I said, the offense and defensive line should be pretty strong. I, I think they could bounce back and, and have a good year in Coach Seidel's first year. So you're going with the Bengals of Blythewood. I tell you what, those boys came in with an attitude when they was at the uh, FNR media day. They were fired up. I mean, they had a look and a glare in their eyes that was very serious. It almost made me nervous. I about ready to grab a helmet and stick it on and say, y'all want to do something? Let's get at it. But uh, I didn't do that. We got bad knees. Uh, but the first game of the year, uh, Sonic Friday Night Rivals, of course, uh, you can catch it right here on Watch Fox. It's going to be Great Collegiate versus Gilbert. That's going to be a great football game on 57.2. That's our first game of the year, August the 17th. Make sure you tune that in. This is the first one of the live shows. We're going to have a lot more coming up in the weeks and days to come, so make sure you keep it locked. We just want to thank some people. Chris Wellbaum filling in. He's directing the show tonight. My man Bradley Smith. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, B. Smith. Did a great job up uh, producing the show tonight. Lou Bajak, the legend of myth, right here back in town. His father over here chilling on the couch. Thank him for watching us and giving us a studio audience. And all of you, we thank you each and every week for hanging out late. We'll see you next week right here in the OT on Watch Fox 57. Have a good night.